wish that was play acting. I haven't been to the gym, cut me some slack. <laughs> Hello. Hi. You're all very nice, aren't you? Hello. Uh, give a round of applause here to you, Craig, ladies and gentlemen. Yay. Doing a wonderful job with hosting and being subtle. Um, <laughs> He did forget one thing though, he pointed out the bar, he pointed out where ye are, but he forgot to point out the location of the nearest emergency exit. <laughs> that way. I always feel obliged to mention that before I do, of course, bring the house down. <laughs> and if you don't like that one, you know where the exit is, don't you? <laughs> It's my first gig back in a while. Uh, it's good to be back. I've always missed gigging in what looks like budget pornos. Shit. Um, I love a reflective ceiling. That's always a. That's always a good vibe. Um, although not gigging, it did give me time to focus on my work, um, which wasn't fun because I had to switch to digital work. Did everyone else have to do the same? Or well, some yeses, some some noes. Uh, no, I, um, I'm a teacher, uh, which kind of sucked digitally, um, because obviously I now know what all of my students' bedrooms look like, which isn't... <laughs> it's not information I was comfortable having. Um, it's alright, I teach at university, they're legal. Um, <laughs> someone shouting mostly. Uh, <laughs> alright, Miss HR. Um, <laughs> God. No, it was tricky though, and obviously, of course, as like this term went on, more and more of them switched off their cameras and it just became black boxes everywhere. I became so good at looking at black boxes, Malaysian Airlines have hired me to look for their missing planes. Like... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's been a while, okay. <laughs> but no, I, I do enjoy, is anyone else here a teacher? Woo, it's a school night, why are you here? <laughs> what do you teach? Oh, so like a jack of all trades, master of none. <laughs> Fair play. I, to be honest, I have infinite respect for you because you have to... Can, do you mind if I ask you a question? What is the maddest thing a child has ever asked you? Right, because this is the thing. that's why I couldn't be a primary school teacher, because sometimes a kid would just come up to you and be like, where do babies come from when it's not the stork? And you're like, well, fuck. <laughs> and that's the answer. Um, <laughs> no, I, t I teach history, uh, which is about as exciting as that silence. Um, I, to be honest, it's, it's a fun subject to teach because I think you can tell a lot about a country by their history. Um, it's because as an Irish, we're all incredibly depressed. <laughs> and English people are smug as a result. Um, out of interest, are, is anyone here not from Ireland? Yeah. yeah. A couple. How's it going, man? Where about you from? Poland. Poland. Let's keep it upbeat. Um, <laughs> Polish history. <laughs> Polish current events. <laughs> Where are you from? Ukraine? Oh, fuck me. Uh, no, I think it is interesting because you can tell a lot about a country from their history. And I think the best example is tend to be Americans. Uh, are there any Americans here this evening? Hey, one at the back. How's it going, man? How are you? Good, how are you doing? Not too bad. You've got a great voice. Very fucking play. Where are you guys are you from? I'm um, from uh, New York. Are you sure you're American? Because you took a while to think about that. <laughs> uh, for, uh, New York. Uh, yeah, that's the, yeah, New York. <laughs> Where the Friends show was filmed. <laughs> Oh, fair play, because like, like Americans, generally speaking, they do tend to exaggerate a fair bit. I think that would be fair to say, would, would you agree? You, know, you like to blow things out of proportion, like other countries. <laughs> but there's an event in American history that really sums up this tendency to exaggerate. Okay, it's called the Boston Massacre. That sounds like quite a big deal, doesn't it? Boston Massacre. Which might have a guess, my friend from New York. How many people do you think were killed in the Boston Massacre? I want to say three. Three. <laughs> yeah, you were close. The correct answer is five. 
Not much of a massacre, it has to be said. That's more of like a Black Friday sale. Uh, it's a classic American exaggeration. We, we need to put this in a bit of perspective. Because the Irish, we had a period, right, of 30 years where 50,000 people were killed, wounded, and made homeless. And we called that the Troubles. <laughs> Get over yourselves, I think. So I, I'm picking on you rather unfairly, but you know, it's part of the course. Um, to, to be honest, I'm just jealous because, as I mentioned, Irish history is fucking tragic um, by comparison, because we do have the worst next door neighbour of all time. Um, and the reason it took us so long to get rid of the English was we asked France for help. And asking France for help in a war is sort of like bringing a sex toy to a knife fight. Like, there are better tools for the job, let's be honest. And most of them are made in Germany. Um, no, but as a result, by like, Ireland, we became neutral uh, quite early on. As soon as we got rid of the English, we decided we're neutral now. No more fighting, we've done enough fighting. And then Hitler happened and made us look like complete assholes. Because imagine the worst thing to ever happen in European history, and we're like, no, I'm not feeling it. <laughs> You've got this, lads. But now we do peacekeeping, which is like the social smoking of war. Like if everyone else is having a war, we'll chip in. We don't really commit, we'll just, ah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is Switzerland okay? Come on. Like, we really tend not to give much of a fuck. Um, but yeah, that's, and this all comes around to why I'm looking for a job as a teacher now, I guess. Uh, it's, I'm, I'm very employable, please. Uh, <laughs> well, I think one of the problems with marketing yourself when you're unemployed is uh, is branding full stop. Branding is, is very difficult. Um, out of it, uh, Polish, how's it going? What's your name? Samuel. All right, Damo. <laughs> what do you do if you don't want me asking? So, for what company? Workday. See, that's pretty straightforward. You get a kind of an idea as to what they do based on the name. Branding's pretty key, right? Uh, brand, if you get branding wrong, it kind of bites your company in the ass. The worst example of this I ever saw was a company that exclusively produces electric wheelchairs. Okay, that's all they make for people who have quite, you know, debilitating medical conditions. And they called their company Karma. <laughs> How fucked is that? <laughs> you know, you've obviously had something terrible happen to you. What did you do? And did you deserve it? <laughs> then you can have a wheelchair. <laughs> Incredible invention, of course, obviously. Um, but uh, I, I think there, there are some inventions that I would rate more highly than others. Uh, the thing that I hate most, than I think the most poorly designed thing more than anything else in the world is the umbrella. They don't have an umbrella. Is there any pessimists in the room? Any umbrella? <laughs> what a piece of shit the umbrella is. I'm sorry, but like, imagine going into a boardroom and pitching this. Okay, we, we, we're to looking for something to keep people dry when it's raining. What have you got? I've got a gym. I've got a portable roof you carry above your head at eye level, which I've surrounded with sharp metal spikes <laughs> in every single corner. Just in case. <laughs> All right. Um, what happens if it's windy and raining? Oh, it fucking destroys itself. <laughs> and you always get some prick cycling while using an umbrella. I saw one of them going over a bridge and I prayed for a gust of wind. Like, get in the fucking Liffey. <laughs> Because rain doesn't do this, it does this, because wind. And then you get these, and they lower the, so you end up in like a fucking joust with this. <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. Um, conscious of time. Uh, how long have I done, Craig? I'm very unprofessional, it's been a while. Five left, class, okay, sorry. It's, it's been a very long time. Um, do more, do more. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You sound love nothing like my students. Um, and less like my girlfriend. Uh, you've got five minutes. Stop early, stop early. Uh, it's 
steady on. Um, <laughs> right, I'll, I'll, I'll get off with this. Uh, that's poor phrasing. Um, <laughs> I'll leave you on this. Um, that works. Um, so, because I was really like sad over COVID, like it was really depressed. I had so many holidays planned, and they all obviously died. Um, so I decided I would um, do a bit of tourism online because there's these places started doing like digital tours of things. And as I mentioned, I'm a fucking nerd who likes history, so I started like doing digital tours of these history places, and I realized that my sex appeal is going down by the second as I tell this story, but that's okay. <laughs> Um, so I was I was looking through all these places, and I ended up um, on TripAdvisor for a lot of really weird places. And I decided to try and find the most inappropriate places that you could leave a one-star review for on TripAdvisor, because people are fucking weird. And it turns out there's loads of them. So I started with war memorials. Um, there's a big one in London, you might have heard, it's called the Cenotaph. It's for every Britishman who's ever died in a war. And Rita B rated it one star, saying, not impressed. <laughs> Cause fuck the dead, right, Rita? <laughs> and then for the Portsmouth Naval Memorial, John Mitchellman gave it one star, saying, they know how to make a good flat white. <laughs> Normally, I have to get an Americana with extra milk, but there was a 10 minute queue. <laughs> One star. <laughs> so, I, as I said, I ended up looking for like the worst place you could leave a one star review. So, Anne Frank's house, um, oh it's gonna get worse. Anne Frank's house <laughs> had 430, including one from a German guy saying, I didn't find what I was looking for here. <laughs> pretty bad. Chernobyl had none because the Russians understand respect. <laughs> Not for borders, but you know. <laughs> you say in general, well, that's your problem. Um, <laughs> but the worst place people left one-star reviews for was the concentration camp Auschwitz. Um, yeah, so someone from Denmark decided to review it one star saying, big, big disappointment. <laughs> it was so crowded I felt I was rushed through the camp. No atmosphere. <laughs> and the bus back was too crowded. Sorry for those who perished at the hands of the evil Germans, but I'm giving this one star. <laughs> In short, great place, terrible customer service. <laughs> That was genuine. Uh, so if you decide to rate the comedy club this evening, maybe give it more than one star. Because that's the caliber of person you're com coming up against. Right, I think that's my time, Craig. Are we happy enough? One more? One more? All right, I'll leave you with one more. Um, this is, you've been an absolutely incredible audience. I'm so glad that you were the ones that I came back to. Um, but this is a story of the worst audience I've ever seen or been a part of. Okay, it was at a production of the play Peter Pan. Familiar with Peter Pan? Yeah. Right. For those of you who aren't, yeah, Peter Pan, it's a great, great film. For those of you who aren't familiar, it's a story of two terrorists <laughs> who travel to London, uh, they kidnap four children from their beds, and then take them to a foreign island and train them to fight against pirates. It's like a paramilitary group. It's kind of like Boko Haram the musical, it's pretty fucked up. Um, they're a terrorist organization in Nigeria who steal children. Um, just context. Um, so there comes a part in this performance where Tinkerbell, who's one of the main kidnappers, uh, she starts to die, and this is sad. Do you have an awe for Tinkerbell? Aww. Yeah. And T Tinkerbell's dying because no one believes in fairies. So Peter Pan turns to the crowd and he says, ladies and gentlemen, Tinkerbell's dying because no one believes in fairies. Will you please clap? if you guys believe in fairies. And as one, together, myself and about 3,000 people in the theater that evening, 